Hi guys, I want to share uh, just real quick, as quick as possible, um, some insight, some Holy Spirit insight on um, giving, being a cheerful giver, according to the New Testament, um, Old Testament, it was tithing. Um, the Holy Spirit um, was speaking to me in my sleep a couple days ago, probably like three days ago or so. Um, and as I was sleeping, I could hear my spirit, um, saying first Corinthians 16, one, first Corinthians 16, one. And so I heard it. Um, and then I just kept repeating it so that I wouldn't forget it. And I was asleep. So, um, I woke up enough to get on my Bible app on my phone and look it up. And then I immediately went back to sleep and, um, <laughs> In the morning, I didn't even remember until probably like an hour later, the Holy Spirit quickened me and I remembered to go check it. So I got on my Bible app and of course it was right there where I had left it and, um, and I'll just read it to you. And this is uh first Corinthians 16 and it's going to be one through four. It says, now regarding your question about the money being collected for God's people in Jerusalem, you should follow the same procedure I gave to the churches in Galatia. On the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. Don't wait until I get there and then try to collect it all at once. When I come, I will write letters of recommendation for the messengers you choose to deliver your gift to Jerusalem. And if it seems appropriate for me to go along, they can travel with me. Okay, so to summarize that, Paul is basically um, instructing believers um, on how to be more um, organized in the way that they collect um, the money to give to the church uh, in Jerusalem. And the church was, uh, in Jerusalem was suffering persecution. They were suffering, um, uh, hardship. And so, um, Paul was just letting them know that you need to, you need to be better at doing it. Don't do it last minute. Don't collect, don't try to collect last minute when I come. You need to do this at the beginning of each week and set aside a portion that God has placed on your heart to give um to those suffering and those in need so i feel like um you know the holy spirit was just um impressing me to be more organized in my giving i am a cheerful giver i do give regularly um to orphanages um and, and orphanages that are, uh, are taking care of the orphans, that are taking care of the widows, that are preaching the gospel and spreading the gospel and sharing the word of God, sharing Bibles and things like that. So that's where my heart is led to give. And that's where I give. And that's where I've been giving for years. But I will admit that I am not very um, structured in my giving. I kind of like give, you know... Um, some here and some there and more this time and, and less that time. So I'm not <laughs> the most structured person. So I know the Holy Spirit is like, come on, girl, I need you to be more structured. And um, don't do that last minute like, oh, man, I need a, I you know, I forgot, you know, so I need to like hurry up and scamper and, and send some stuff, you know, and he just wants me to be a little more consistent. And, um, with that being said, I think right now God is, you know, and always God wants us to be cheerful givers. He wants us to take care of one another. Um, and also want to just share the blessings that come through allowing God to be Lord over your finances. Let's be honest. It takes great faith to let God be Lord and to touch your finances, um, and be in control of your finances, especially for me being someone who knows what it's like 
to sleep in a car, who knows what it's like to not know where your next meal is going to come from or how you're going to pay the rent. Um, and glory to God, he has gotten me through all of that and been faithful through all of that. And I've never, you know, ever, you know, been without uh, my basic needs being met. Um, but it can be scary. It can be scary. You don't ever want to go back into that position. And it can be scary sometimes. Um, so it does take faith to be a cheerful giver and a consistent giver. And so I think, but with that, you know, that really pleases God um, when we can put our faith in him and the things that are precious to us, the things that bring us security. I think it's a move of faith, you know, and um, it's pleasing to God when we take care of one another. And also, I just want to share and be honest. <laughs> I want to share a testimony. It's a little embarrassing, but, you know, glory to God, okay? So about probably about a year ago now, maybe less, um, I, you know, I had been cheerfully giving for years and stuff, but I had gotten to the point where I'm like, you know what, I'm tired of living in the hood. I'm tired of living in these ghetto apartments. I mean, I loved all my experiences there. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of... <laughs> work to do in the hood. Um, so there was always a mission God had for us, but you know, I want to, I don't want to be there forever. You know, I can always go visit. So, you know, my, so I thought, okay, well, you know, I do the will of God and I do, uh, work for the Lord. So I'm just going to, uh, stop giving for a little bit and I'm just going to save it up for a house. Like, I want to have my family in a house um, for a change. And so I stopped giving. And I started just, like, trying to save it. And I will tell you that that was the most, you know, <laughs> I had to learn um, that that was not a smart idea. I will tell you that I lost thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars throughout that months. It was probably four to five months that I was going by this theory that I had. And within those months, I lost thousands of dollars. I mean, they would just, it, it would just disappear into thin air, literally. Like, money would just disappear out of my purse. It would just disappear. I'm so serious, guys. I'm so serious. And so I'm like, what on earth is happening? And I knew, like, I knew that I was like, wow, like, I'm so thump -thump -thump right now because I had to open a legal right for the enemy to come in and devour my finances. Because I took my finances into my own control with my own understanding and that opened a legal right for the enemy to come in and basically just steal it, steal it, supernaturally stole it straight from out of, out my purse, straight from out, like just straight from out of my hands. And so finally, this goes on long enough where I'm like, okay, because I'm like, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe, you know, like maybe, I don't know. And then finally, God's like, girl, like slap, slap. How long is it going to take you to realize that you have allowed the enemy to come into your finances and you need to keep giving and walking by faith? And I'm like, Okay, so I finally, like, you know, snap out of it. And I start cheerfully giving again. And then everything was fine. Everything went back to normal. <laughs> that wasn't, that stopped happening, like, immediately. So I just want to share that to let you guys know 
that if you will put your finances in the hands of the Lord, he will bless you. He will multiply you. Also, I was blessed financially. Like, I was blessed financially. But before that blessing came, it was like God was saying, look, girl, look, daughter, you're about to get a financial breakthrough, but it ain't going to come if you're not being a cheerful giver. So I think that's also why he was like, this money was just being lost so quick and, and just being taken. And so he had to like snap me out of it and get my attention real quick. So I figured it out. I got it together. And God was like, you're not going to receive that financial breakthrough if you're not sowing a seed. Everything has to be sowed. If you want to reap um, finances, you got to sow finances. Um, so praise God, I started sewing again and, um, I received that financial breakthrough. Um, God is just so faithful. So amazing. It came out of nowhere. Um, nothing but God could have done such a thing. But anyways, I would have missed out on that if I would have, you know, continued on this little trip that I was on thinking that I was going to save up for a house. And, um, this is just not how it works. You have to give your finances to the Lord. You have to be a cheerful giver. Um, and so if you are struggling financially, I just encourage you. And I just want this to encourage you to start giving, start giving towards the things of God, start giving towards the needs of God's people, um, consistently, and you will see, God bless your finances. You will see God come through with miracle money. Literally, you will see him come through with miracle money. You will see numbers in your bank account that you're that aren't even possible. Um just show up. Um because God is faithful and um so I just pray that it encourages you to give if you if you haven't been giving if um you know, you need to be stretched in that area, then give, start giving whatever, whatever God has put on your heart, whatever you can, you know, I know we're in tough times right now, but give what you can and God will see it and God will bless you and multiply and increase it, um, and increase financial blessings in your life. So God bless you guys.